Well, welcome. Today in this video, we're going to be looking at a new way of factoring trinomials. And this works for any kind of trinomial. And recall that a trinomial is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And even if you're working with a perfect square trinomial, we can still use this method. So if you have a hard time determining whether or not something's a perfect square trinomial, you don't have to sweat that anymore. You can use this uh, new technique. Now, this is a non-traditional approach. Maybe you've seen other methods where maybe your teacher has asked you to uh, factor by using what I call the guess and check method. I used to hate factoring um, back when I was a student because that was the way that I was taught by guess and check. And it was just very long. It was drawn out. And it wasn't until I became a teacher that I discovered this other uh, technique. And I've kind of uh, molded it to be kind of my own technique. And I call it the Xbox method. Now, I don't say that because I prefer any one type of console over another. It's simply because we're going to start by drawing an X and drawing a box. And the box is going to be a 2 by 2 grid. Now, it's important to remember that whenever we're asked to factor, we always look for a GCF, or greatest common factor, first. Now, once we've found a J greatest common factor or determined that there is none, and we're working with a trinomial, like I said, I always start by drawing an X and this little box. Now, what's this X all about? Well, in this top part of the X, we're going to take whatever our middle term is, that BX term, and put that in the top part of the box, and, or bottom part, top part of the X. In the bottom part of the X, we're going to take the first term, the AX squared, and multiply that times the last term. So we're going to take AX squared times C. And over here in the box, we're going to take and put whatever that AX squared is and whatever that C is in the top left and the bottom right corners of the box. So that's just the setup. Now, here's the goal, and it becomes kind of a game. What we're going to do, what goes in these two spots, is we're looking for two items. We're looking for two numbers that add together to be the top portion of the box, and the same two numbers that multiply together to be this bottom part of the X. So we're looking for what two numbers add to be in that first part of the x, the top part of the x, and same two numbers uh, multiply to be this bottom part of the x. That is what we're looking for. So let's look at an example so you can see how we would apply this. So let's start again by drawing an x and drawing our box. Let's get everything all set up now. So we're going to put in this top part of the x, we're going to put this positive 7x. In the bottom part of the x, we're going to multiply the 2x squared and the 6 to get 12x squared. And over here in the box, we put in the 2x squared and we put in the 6. Now, if you were to try to factor this using the guess and check method, a problem like this would be very time consuming. But this is going to go relatively quickly. Because what you want to do, again, is you're trying to find two numbers that add together to be 7, same two numbers that multiply together to be 12x squared. So it's actually easier if we start out with a 12x squared. So think about the factors of 12. Well, uh, 2 times 6, uh, 1 times 12, 3 times 4. We want to figure out out of those factors which two add together to be 7. Well, 3x times 4x give us 12x squared. And 3x plus 4x give us 7x. So we're going to take those two that we just got, the 3x and the 4x, we're going to put, put them in these two boxes. It doesn't matter which, two bo which box you put them in. I can put the 3x in this box, the 4x down here. I can put the 4x up here, the 3x down here. It does not matter. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look for the greatest common factor for each row and each column. So in this row here, this first row between the 2x squared and the 3x, the greatest common factor is just x. In that bottom row, 4x and 6, the greatest common factor is just a 2. Now in that column, the first column, the greatest common factor is a 2. In other words, or 2x. In other words, x times 2x is 2x squared. 2x times 2 is 4x. You can almost look at this as what would we multiply now to get those other items. And the greatest common factor in this column is a positive 3. Because 3 times, and then 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 2 is 6. So you should always double check and make sure the outside pieces multiply together to be the, multiply together to be the inside pieces. 
And so guess what? We just factor this down. This factors to be 2x plus 3 times x plus 2. Let's look at the next one. Again, let's set up our x. Let's set up our box. I forgot to mention it with the previous example, but we always want to look to see if there's a greatest common factor. But for both of these, there is not a greatest common factor. So we can just start by putting in the information into our x in our box here. So the middle term, the 13x, goes in the top part of our x. Multiply 4 times 3x squared, we get 12x squared. Take that 3x squared, put it in the top left of the box. Put that positive 4, put it in the bottom right-hand corner of the box. And now the fun begins. We're trying to find two numbers that multiply together to be 12x squared. Same two numbers that add together to be 13x. Have you figured it out yet? Well, you should get 1 and 12, so 1x and 12x. Make sure you include the x's. 1x and 12x multiply together to be 12x squared. 1x plus 12x also add to be 13x. So we're going to put the 1x in one of these places in this box and put the 12x in the other. Now let's look for the GCF for each row and each column. So in this row here, the greatest common factor is just x. In the bottom row, our bo greatest common factor is a positive 4. In that first column, find the greatest common factor there would be a 3x. Again, double check, 3x times x is 3x squared, 3x times 4 is 12x. So far, so good. Now in this last column, the greatest common factor between x and 4, you might say that there is none. Well, everything has at least one common factor, and that common factor is always going to be at least a 1. And sure enough, 1 times x is x, 1 times 4 is 4. So we just found that our factored formula to be 3x plus 1 times x plus 4. And that's it. Well, let's look at some more complicated ones that, have, that aren't just all pluses. Let's see if that, what to do here with this one's a plus and a minus. Again, I always look for a greatest common factor. This has none. So we're going to start by setting up our x and our box. So when we, put, when we set this up, we'll have the 18x up here. Negative 5 times 8 is negative 40x squared. And then over here, we're going to have the 8x squared and a negative 5. So now we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to be negative 40x squared. Same two numbers add together to be 18x. Now this might take a little bit because 40 has more factors, but eventually you'll get to it. But you want to think about this now for a second. Two numbers are going to multiply to be a negative answer. And they add together to be a positive answer. So when we go and look at, at our factors, you need to think about, well, if they multiply together to be negative, that means that one of the numbers has to be negative. We have to add those two numbers together and equals a positive answer. So that means the negative number is actually going to be the smaller number between the two. Because otherwise, if, it, if the negative number was a larger one, your answer when you add them together would end up being a negative number. So let's uh, see here. So maybe you came up with it already, but it would be negative 2x and a 20x. Because negative 2x times 20x is negative 40x, and negative 2x plus 20x is 18x. So again, we'll put these over here. Doesn't matter where you, it does not matter where you put them. So let's find the GCF now for each row and each column. So the greatest common factor for this row is 2x. The greatest common factor for this row would be 5. Now in this next column, the greatest common factor here between 8 and 20 would be 4 x, and double check, 4x times 2x is 8x squared, and 4x times 5 is 20x. Now you've got to be careful with this column. Anytime the first number is a negative, you always factor out a negative. It doesn't matter if they're both negatives as long as the first one's negative. And the greatest common factor there between the 2 and the 5 would just be 1. So let's double check. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. So our factored form would be 4x minus 1 times 2x plus 5. See how easy this is? Well, why don't you try one on your own now? Why don't you try this one? We have 10x squared minus 17x plus 3. So why don't you get this all factored down? So again, set up your own x in your box and put everything in the right places and see if you can't figure out those two missing pieces. So 
Work on that and pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, let's see how you did here. So you should have um, put the negative 17x in the top part of the x and you should have put the 30x squared, 3 times 10x squared would give you 30x squared in the bottom part of the x. And then the 10x squared and the plus 3 would go on the top left and the bottom right corners of our box. Now when you went to start this before finding negative 2x and negative 15x, you should have recognized that here we were looking for two numbers that multiply together to be a positive. Same two numbers add together to be negative. So that tells us that both numbers are going to be negative because that's the only way that you could uh, get a positive answer when you multiply them and a negative answer when you add them. So it's going to be, so again, looking at the factors, looking through those factors of 30, you would have stumbled across negative 2x and negative 15x that again multiply to be a positive 30x squared that add together to be a negative 17x. Put those numbers in the box, factor out your greatest common factor for each row and each column. You should have gotten these on the outside. Again, always take time to double check and make sure that uh, they multiply together to be what's on the inside and 2x times 5x is 10x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. Negative 3 times 5x is negative 15x. And negative 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3. So your answer would be 5x minus 1 times 2x minus 3. So hopefully you're getting this. And again, I want to iterate the fact that um, even if it's a perfect square trinomial, uh, this technique would work. If it was a perfect square um, a trinomial, what would end up happening is the outside would end up being... Like, for example, if this just so happened to be a perfect square trinomial, ignore what's on the inside. Um, but if it was a perfect square trinomial, you'd end up with the same thing on the top and the bottom, in which case you could just write your answer as 5x minus 1. Instead of saying 5x minus 1 times 5x minus 1, you can write it as 5x minus 1 quantity squared. Um, but otherwise, good luck now as you work on your assignment.